Okay, it's the morning of math for college. Uh, it's possible that the girl in Florida might end up watching this at some point. Right now we have the girl that returned from Scotland. JC, would you like to give a shout out to Miss Morgan? Say whatever you want. Say, hi Morgan, I miss you. Come on. Hi Morgan. Just a hi Morgan, no missing you. Well, Max? Can you give her a shout out? Max, anything? Hi Morgan, I miss you. Oh wow, look at that. That was cute. All right, we'll take that. Morgan, class is falling apart without you. So I'm going to say, you're like the glue that holds us together. So we hope you return soon. Um, graphing functions uh, by using transformations. So this unit is kind of a hodgepodge of different kind of collections with just a Thager theorem, just this formula. Uh, this is one uh, that you will, without a doubt, use. As you go into a future college math class, I will venture to say that this lesson might be the most important lesson that you can commit to memory and take with you, okay? And you've seen it before, but in this light, it hopefully makes more sense than it did the first time, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give to you what we call parent functions. And a parent function, we'll do this one later, but the first one will be y is equal to x or f of x is x. So this is, you know, function notation, f of x is x. Uh, y equals x means the same exact thing. And what that means is if we plug a value in for x, it will produce a value for y. Namely, if x was negative 2, what would the y value be? Negative 2, same thing, right? And if x was negative 1, y would be negative 1. If x was 0, y would be 0. If x was 1, y was 1. And if x was 2, y is 2. Now, you may be wondering, why did I pick those values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2? I just picked it because I knew that they would work out well for me, but we couldn't pick any values at all. When I plot those, notice... What kind of shape do I get? We just get a line with a slope of 1. We've seen that before. That's our first pair of function. It is what we call a linear function because it makes a line. Anybody know what shape this one makes? A y equals x squared. So it's the p parabola. If we plug in negative 2 for x, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, it will produce y values. We take negative 2 and we square it, we get 4. We take negative 1 and square it, we get 1. We take 0 and we square it, we get 0. 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. So notice the shape that's produced. As Eric said, this does make a parabola. We call this quadratic. And it makes the shape of a parabola. And you've seen those before. And I want to be clear as we continue in this investigation, you will not, you will not plug in values every time in order to generate the graphs. We're going to show you a much easier way to do that. This one, y equals x cubed, we call this a cubic. So again, plugging values of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So you have white paint on my hands from the from last night. Try to get it all off, it work. We take the x value and we cube it. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That would be a negative, it would be negative 8. Negative 1. 
times negative 1 times negative 1, negative 1. 0 times 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So notice the last one only produced positive values because when you square something, it becomes positive. But when you cube a negative, it outputs a negative. So this one has both positive values and negative values. That negative 2, negative 8 is kind of off the chart. That's all right. That's approximated shape that we get. There are three more functions to get through. Can somebody tell me what are good numbers to take the square root of? What kind of numbers do I like to take the square root of? How about the number 10? Would we like to try to take the square root of 10? No. Doesn't work out very well. How about the square root of 16? Yeah, that works out well. How about the square root of negative 9? We don't take the square root of negatives because those are imaginary. You remember when we were talking about the quadratic formula? We took the square root of negatives. You got imaginary results. So, therefore, in this situation, I'm going to plug in the values. Nothing that's negative. I'm going to plug in 0, 1, 4, and 9. So you can choose the type of x values in order to produce the shape that you want. So the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to go over 4 and up 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And so this is the shape that you get. That's the shape of the square root function. A lot of people just say the root function. Notice how the x values never go back behind, um, you know, or never go back of 0, never go to the negatives. Absolute value function, this is our last one. Okay, we point at negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We can plug negatives into this one because if you take the absolute value of negative, it becomes positive. And as we plot them, it makes the shape kind of like a parabola, but it's different. It actually makes a V shape. Are we good with that? Now we're going to do our last one, and that's the constant function. For example, y is equal to 4, we'll say. Okay? Y is equal to 4. What that means is no matter what you plug in for x, say x is negative 2 or negative 1 or 0, 1, and 2, no matter what you plug in for x, there's actually nowhere even to plug in something for x. It just says that y is always 4. So just for every value, we write 4 for y. We've seen this type of function before. It was when we did linear functions. It's a horizontal line, and it passes through positive 4. It's just the y value is always 4. This is called the constant function. So, let's figure out how to graph these without making a table. Because when I make a table, it generally takes me a minute or two to make it, then plot it. We want to give you a way to graph these that will take seconds, okay? I'm talking like 10 seconds to graph it, and you'll be done. So, flip it on over. 
and I got to go back to my seat, and you guys have to help me out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to a special website called Desmos. And we don't use Desmos a lot, but I think Desmos is super, super helpful when we're doing this kind of stuff. And what I'm going to do is I go to Desmos, and I'll check in. Uh, with our, uh, you know, with this guy right here, what we want to do is we're going to grab x squared, okay? And so I'm going to grab that first. And I go y is equal to x squared. And then I'm going to grab the next one. Raleigh, what does the next one say? y equals x squared what? x squared plus 4. So somebody tell me, how is x squared plus 4, how is the blue function different than the red function? Just shift in which direction? Up 4 units. So as you guys look at this sheet right here, under x squared plus 4, I just want you to write up 4. Okay, x squared plus 4 shifted up 4. Let's look at the next one, negative x squared plus 4. Anyone want to make a guess what's going to happen here? Let's see. I got x squared plus 4. I'm going to simply just put a negative sign on it. Watch what happens. It's still up 4, so the plus 4 made it go up 4, but the negative made, made it flip upside down. So underneath that one, right, up 4 upside down. Okay, we'll look at the next one. The next one says x minus 3 quantity squared. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to type that in, parentheses, x minus 3, parentheses, quantity squared. How is that one different? We got right 3. So over here, underneath the minus 3 squared, write down the words write 3. Now, doesn't that seem weird? If it's a minus 3, doesn't it seem like it should be left 3? But it's, it's opposite of what you think when it's on the inside there. Anybody want to guess what's going to happen with the x plus 2 squared? Let's see if it goes left 2. We'll try it. Plus 2. And sure enough, yep, you're right. So underneath the plus 2, right, left 2. Went left 2 on us. And then this last one, I want you to take 20 seconds, talk to the person next to you or around you, and make a guess what's going to happen with this last one, okay? Talk about the last one. Make a guess. Talk. Go. All right, negative x plus 5 squared plus 1. Let's see what happens. As you notice, it is left 5 due to the plus 5. It is up 1 due to the plus 1. And then the negative on the outside makes it flip upside down. So instead of making charts, we can simply just look at these pieces and make predictions about what's going to happen. Now, these aren't all the types of transformations, but these are the most important ones. And so I'm just going to write here, this makes it go upside down. This makes it go left, 5. And this makes it go up, 1. So if we want to kind of uh, summarize what these type of operations do to a function, what is the negative on the outside due to the function? Yeah, or I'll write vertical flip. And then this k right here that sits on the outside of the function, that makes a vertical shift.
Notice how these things that are on the outside, they impact the graph in a vertical manner. So if it's on the outside, it affects it vertically. If it's on the inside, it affects it horizontally. Horizontal shift. Okay, and it's opposite what you think. So remember, for this one, we didn't move left three, we moved right three. And for this one, we didn't move right two, we moved left two. So it's opposite what you think, okay? Opposite what you think. So we'll do these six, and this will take us seconds to graph these as opposed to making a T-chart every time. I want to be clear, folks, when I gave this test uh, a couple of years ago, I had over half the class for every single one of these problems makes it making an XY T chart in order to graph these. That is absolutely unnecessary, and if we do that, we miss the entire point of the lesson. So the first thing that we want to do is just understand what the parent function is. And the parent function is just Y equals X, and I'm going to draw that in red. The graph of Y equals X looks like this. So now I will draw the graph after the transformation. What's the minus 3 going to do? Just going to move it down 3, right? Move it down 3. That's it. From the next one, the parent function is a parabola. Y is equal to x squared. In the red, I will draw the graph of the parent function. Just looks like that. The plus four, is that on the inside or outside? That's on the inside, isn't it? So it's going to impact it horizontally. Is it going to move it left four or right four? Yep, left four. Opposite of what you think when it's on the inside. So left four. The next one is going to be the graph of the absolute value function. These you need to memorize. That made the shape of a V. Notice how the minus 3, it's not on the inside, it's on the outside. So that's going to impact it vertically. So it's simply going to move it down 3 units. So I just drop it 3 units. If you remember what that square root function looks like, kind of starts at zero and trails off to the side like this. You have two transformations. The plus one is going to move it right one, and the plus three is going to move it up three. So I go right one and up three, and it trails off like that. The next one is y equals x cubed. Hopefully you remember from what we did that the cubic function looks like this. So you're trying to figure out the transformation. The plus 2 is on the inside. So it's going to move it left 2, and then the minus 3 will be down 3. And I'd like you to try the last one on your own. Try the last one on your own.
Okay, the square makes it a parabola. We have three transformations. Minus 5 moves it right 5. Plus 2 makes it move up 2. And then the negative makes it flip upside down. That's what you should have. So, being able to understand the transformations of the graphs, super important. I'll post the answer key from yesterday and today. You guys have the rest of the hour to work. Um, I told you we try to have class on the side someday, and I'll work on that. Next week, I know that they're talking, uh, uh, it's going to get colder tomorrow on Sunday, but next week it's supposed to warm up again. JC, what's my temperature, uh, what's my lowest temperature I can have before we go outside? Suppose it's 60, is that too cold? 55? That's a little chilly. All right, we're going to say 60 degrees, okay? I Actually, right now it's 54, but it's sunny. I think it's warm at 54 right now. All right, bye, Morgan. Good luck.